right, folks, welcome back to the Iowa Chill Show. I'm joined by my co-host, Bryce Borschelder, and we got a, the Iowa bench assassin, Austin Ash. Austin, how we do, man? Good. Good to be here. Austin, so I, I want to get right into it. At the end of game, I was up by 20. This friend, you know, we're looking to put the dagger into the other team. This friend just look at you and be like, finish them. You <laughs> kind of going to hit the 30-foot fucking three on them every time or what? Um, I wouldn't say that exact quote, but uh, he gives me pretty much the green light when I go in there. So, I mean, um, especially the one against Iowa State, that really felt good against those guys. But, yeah, I go in there looking to fly, um, get the teammates going on the bench. But, um, yeah, always looking to uh, get the shot up when I'm in there, take advantage of the, the minutes that are there. Talk about the Iowa State three. What was going through your head? Were you, you just launched that and turned around? I mean, did you know that was going in right away or what? Yeah, I grew up uh, an Iowa kid, um, so I was always a huge Iowa fan, never really huge fans of Iowa State, um, always, always into the rivalry. So, I mean, I saw we were up like 25-30. I was like, you know, I looked at Michael, I said, I think we're going to get into the end of this game. Um, and I've never played against them in my four years here. So then got, Josh got the rebound, hands me. I was like, I even heard my dad yell, pull up as I got the rebound <laughs> in the stands. So I was like, I got to let this go. And it felt great off my hands. So I was like, I'm just going to I'm just gonna run this one off. And, I, it, and the rest was history. It's a pleasure. <laughs> You just flashed that one. So, hey, tell us kind of what's, what's going on in Indianapolis. So, uh, give us your day-to-day. I know you guys kind of been clocked in since the Big Ten. Uh, how are things going there right now? It's going well. Um, it's pretty um, well organized, good process so far. So, we wake up. Uh, we don't know our testing time each morning, but they give us a time. Um, we wear, They actually gave us a special mask that's, like, really protective. And we go I think I saw the- that on uh, Jordan's post. Like a 60, N64 or something like that. Or okay. Whatever. We go down and get tested, um, and they make sh- it takes actually a while to get the results. And then they tell us a practice time, we pr- and it's actually connected on the hotel, the convention center, or right downtown Indy. So we, we get a practice time, we practice. I mean, watch film. Just I mean, we watch the selection show, and honestly, we haven't really got too much into it yet because we just found out who we're playing. So, but uh, for uh, for shooters, how is this ven- new venue going to compare to like the Big Ten tournament? I, I mean, it's it's where Indiana State plays, I believe. So it's gonna. I mean, it's a pretty small gym. I think it'll be definitely a lot easier for shooters. As I mean, the percentages were way low at the mm-hmm. Big Ten tournament for I mean, sure. We got we shot a lot better against Illinois. I think a team shot better as it went on. Ohio State shot really well in the championship game too. I think towards the end, but I think it, it'll be a definitely a nice nice venue to uh, shoot at for sure. Awesome, cool. Yeah, definitely the size of the arena kind of has an impact. I remember last year, a lot of people were concerned about playing at Syracuse. You yeah, know, carrier dome. Uh, I mean, do you personally notice any difference kind of when you're in there? Yeah, you're shooting around. Definitely, the first like five or ten shots, you can definitely tell uh, the backdrop. Like when it's closer, it's just a lot easier to shoot. But once you get used to it, I mean, we have so many good shooters in our team as well. Like they get used to it, they'll knock them down. But especially at the Big Ten tournament, those rims are so tight; they just wheel those in. You know what I mean? It's like right. brand, new, brand, brand new basketballs out of the box too. It's like you're not going to get many bounces. No, yeah, I always remember that playing at the new bar. Like, shit, you kind of want to break into basketball. Yeah. But are you guys kind of noticing or seeing any other teams throughout, like, the Indianapolis when you guys are out doing your own things? Or who, yeah. what other teams have you seen? Yeah, no, I've definitely seen a lot of teams. I think – I actually think there's 26 teams at our hotel. Um, Holy so, cow. Yeah, so there's probably, I think, at least five to ten teams that meet on our floor because, like, everybody has their little room that they meet in, like kind of like conference room. I've seen Iona. I've seen San Diego State. Uh, I've seen we've we've seen Ohio State obviously. Um, who else have we seen? Um, just a lot of lot of teams. Texas, Oklahoma State. Just saw them on the elevator. Um, Hartford, but it's actually pretty cool seeing all these teams that you see on TV qualifying. Saw Ohio, um, but it's pretty cool. Are you guys just are you guys just like what's up, or are you just kind of ignoring yeah, like you know, we're, we got some business to do? Yeah, I know. Not a lot of conversation, but just a head nod or what's up or good luck, stuff like that. Guys, right. Things that you don't think you'll see. I mean, you might say like, good luck, go get them, stuff like that. But How do you guys feel about the region that you're in? I uh, definitely like it. Just got to take it one game at a time. Uh, March Madness is so crazy that like you really can't look too far ahead because the team you might think you're going to play might get upset or might lose and stuff like that. But sure. Frank Gaines is a good opponent. Uh, they won their league in the regular season and in the conference tournament. They got a couple of good big guys. They're a good quality team. So we just got to take it one at a time, and I think we'll be – in a good spot yeah they have the twin towers but we i mean i know iowa has one of the best fan bases if not the best fan base in college basketball but we can't overlook grand canyons lit student section i know that yeah. they've had a reputation uh, we, we had peter, we had peter jock on a uh, previous episode we kind of talked about when he was at the three-point contest there he said that was the most lit environment he's ever been in when he took home the trophy there uh so maybe we're kind of somewhat thankful that they're not allowed to travel but at the same time iowa you know we got to give credit to their fan base but what do you 
are you guys expecting what are the what is the capacity looking like for uh the tournament here is it 20 percent or think, you know i think i saw it was 20 percent. so i think i think it's like pretty similar to what the big 10 tournament was obviously the big 10 tournament was a huge bigger venue so they could get more people in there but i think it's i think it's 20 percent 20 or 25, I believe. Which will feel like a bunch compared to what the whole season's been. Exactly. I mean, at the Big Ten. And the rim volume up. Yeah. No, we were playing it. That Illinois game felt like it was full house. I mean, yeah, dead. It, it's just so much more fun to watch it, too. Oh, yeah. It makes it a lot fun for, for the bench guys, too. It gets a yeah. little <laughs> well, you guys were literally the, the fans for a while, and uh, it was fun to compare different benches throughout the uh, the season, like who, who was really behind their guys, and uh, I think we did an adequate job. Yeah, we tried. We, we had to compete with that. The Michigan bench was crazy. Yeah, they were crazy. Yeah. Is that a, is that a little side competition going on? Uh, we, yeah, when we played them, we tried to match their energy. They're they're nuts, though. Every possession they're into the game, they're locked in. So we kind of tried to go off of those guys a little bit. Well, it seems like Juwan Howard's getting everybody fired up, too, lately. Yeah, <laughs> sure, true. Uh, is, uh, is the NCAA taking pretty uh, good care of you guys right now? Or I know – Jordan may post this on the uh, snap story or he's on the Barstool Bench Bob podcast. Talk about like a little care package they got. How are they guys taking care and looking after you guys right now? Yeah. So they, um, they gave everybody a couple different gifts. So obviously on Jordan's, I think you saw like the deodorant shampoo stuff, <laughs> stuff we already packed, but a lot, a lot of stuff. Right. Like that. So we got a, we got a couple books. We got an NCA puzzle. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, they take, they got, we had some good food last couple of days, uh, delivered to our room, but now we can, after, that was our quarantine period. Now we can go down uh, in our meeting rooms and eat. So that's been better. But uh, honestly, as long as we're playing, I, I can't complain about too much. Last year was just pretty devastating. Um, yeah. You built the whole season's a build up for the NCAA tournament. So I think Lucas said in one of his interviews, we would quarantine for six months if we had to just to play, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Just, I'm grateful for the opportunity. Totally. I mean, this is, we were super looking forward to it last year. We thought we had a really good chance. I, I when I say we, I think the state of Iowa, mostly yeah. Nate talking back and forth. Um, and then this year it's, it's awesome. Even if it is the 20% fans, we want to see you guys go as far as you can. Um, we talked about a little bit with Frank last week. Uh, what are your thoughts on uh, Drake? Do you think they got a shot to win a few games and maybe yeah. play you guys if you keep winning too? Yeah, definitely. That'd be, I mean, that'd be a pretty awesome thing to see. Um, I, I know we've talked that, but talked about that before, like maybe playing you and I, when they had a couple of good teams, um, even before I got here, they had a really good team and yeah. sort of as well. So everybody was looking for that matchup as well in the tournament, but I could definitely see it happening. I've been watching them play. They got a lot of good guards. They got good inside play. They play extremely hard defensively. Um, they've had some unfortunate injuries, obviously, but they've been able to overcome them um, and get to the championship game in their league. And, I mean, I think it'd be really fun. I think they got a, a good shot. Um, there's a lot, they're going to have to play a good Wichita State team, and then more than likely, US, you'll play USC if they win, and they're really good too. But, I mean, right. anybody can beat anybody. Um, then they got that chip on their shoulder. So, it'll be, that'd be, it could definitely happen for sure. Right. Well, take Hampo coming back. Uh, that definitely makes a difference in the Drake roster. I know the, yeah. the first round of playing games are, we're in for uh, some great uh, competition there. If Michigan yeah. State playing UCLA, then Drake playing Wichita State, which I think are, two fantastic matchups i so i'm really excited for this year's march madness also we got it taken away from us last year so i mean i so let's not take it for granted let's kind of go and have a good time with it i'm pumped i know austin you're pumped uh so what's the rest of the day looking like for you um we just got done with lunch actually so we got a little bit of downtime it's 107 here uh we actually have a lift at 2 30 and then we'll go right into practice so We'll head down. We actually have to walk all like we have to meet at the elevators and all go down together. Um, and then they have like we have a team ambassador, they call it um, someone from the NCA that walks us to the uh, convention center where we practice and they'll start the timer. Um, we'll practice there. Come back, eat dinner. I think we're having um, some Italian place delivered in tonight because so, you get one meal a day uh, brought in from the outside. So we look forward to that, obviously. Um, and then I think that's going to be all for the day. So probably watch some Netflix or uh, play some cards with uh, teammates. So you guys went scootering the other day, right? Yeah, that was before yeah. they closed down the bubble. So we, we played a game of wiffle ball, rode the scooters a little bit. It was a good time. Was Luca struggling on that? <laughs> on the scooters or wiffle yeah. ball? Or both? Uh, maybe both. <laughs> um, both, actually. Um, I was one of the captains. I took him as my first pick um, in the wiffle ball game, and I think he was about one for 14. Ooh, bad choice. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, on the scooters, he was, uh, he was a little shaky at first, but then he got the hang of it. I mean, he's too, he's too big to be riding on that thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Austin, I mean, you're like I said, we talked about the beginning of this podcast. You just go in. I swear to God, every time you you go in, I'm like, hey, yo, yo Ash is in. Watch this. He's gonna pull from deep, man. And you do. You just pull up consistently, and I, I you know, I appreciate that. Uh, how many threes in a, in a row have you made before? Um, 
I used to really try that when I was in middle school and my younger years in high school, I used to actually really try to stand at the top of the key with my dad and, or in another rebounder and just really try to groove it and get it. And I think my most was 46 in a row. Holy I, have, I have not topped that in a while. Um, I, I need to try and do that again, but 46 is my record from, from three. Do you know what J-Bos is? I don't know. I bet, I bet it's very similar, maybe a little higher. Maybe it's just, it's all about if you practice that too. I mean, if you're moving, when he shoots a lot, he shoots 10 at a spot and rotates. Um, if you want to get a huge record, um, you got it. It's easier to stand still. I know his free throws is upper one hundreds. Um, Cause we've gone back and forth on that a couple of times, but I'm sure it's right there with mine. Forties sure. or fifties. <laughs> Which would make sense. All right, Austin. Uh, I want to give you the opportunity here the back some things that might've been said about you on the standpoint podcast. Uh, you, we can either delete this or we could talk about it, but you, you might've had on, I mean, we've all had these experiences in over in Europe, you might've had a little gambling experience over at the casino. Uh, you might've won some money. You might've lost some money. Do you want to talk? Can you fill us in on that? Uh, yeah, I was eight, just turned 18. Um, I was a freshman with the older guys and, um, we actually got stipend money. Um, Walk-ons don't typically get stipend money, but on the Europe trip, we did um, nice. with that because they, that's just what you do every four years. Um, and we were, I don't even know where we were, but there was a casino and we had a lot of downtime because it's really just a fun trip. You're experiencing a lot of things. Um, you go to different places. Uh, the games really don't mean as much. It's more about team bonding and stuff like that. So about 10 of us guys head over to the casino, guys like Dom Ewell, uh, Christian Williams at the time, J-Bo, um, Jack Nudgy, guys like that. And we were just playing blackjack. And I mean, I, I was hot, like hot. Probably hit, I probably hit 15 blackjacks in an hour or something like that. And I really didn't know what I was doing at the time and really had no idea. And eventually I, was, I didn't even know how much I was up. And then I ended up, I started in with like $80 or something like that and ended up having nothing. And they looked at me and goes, do you know how much you were up? And I go, no. And they tell me it was a crazy number or whatever. But I think the story has been exaggerated over the years, but I let them have their fun. <laughs> and this. I've heard well, a lot of that. I mean, I just had so many relatable experiences, but that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> At least you're up, not down. True. True. Bryce, are we looking for anything else from Austin right now while he's on the podcast? You know, I don't have a whole lot of questions other than uh, did you fill out a bracket? I did not. You know, it's. It, I'm just looking forward to watching all the games. Um, I don't. I think we're technically not allowed to. So. Yeah, probably not. It'll just be fun to uh, watch all the games. And like okay. you said, the play, right away, the playing games are going to be fun to watch. It's going to be Michigan State, UCLA, like that's going to be a good one as well. Do you have anybody that you uh, expect to make the Sweet 16 that most people wouldn't? Um, I, I, I mean, a lot of people are picking the underdogs, I think, that I would have gone with anyway. I mean, a lot of people are rolling, like, think Ohio's going to win. They've got a really good team. But all these mid-major teams are just really good. I mean, they yeah. see, like, the 25-1 and one or 23-4. and four. Like, these, are, these are good teams. And some of their losses are by one or two points. And then you look at some of the top seeds, and they have seven or eight losses. Obviously, it's because of strength of schedule and playing sure. in the Big Ten and the Big 12. But I mean, these guys just know how to win, and they're, they're 22, 23 years old. So, I mean, anything can happen. Nothing would surprise me this year, especially with COVID and um, the fans are limited and everything like that. I mean, I would, I would, you're going to see some crazy things, I think. For sure. It's a hard year to pick, and I thought that, you know, really, like – Illinois would have been maybe a surefire for me, but then they get put in the bracket that they do. Sh Loyal Chicago, likely, uh, potentially Oklahoma State. I mean, I feel like, honestly, I don't, I don't want to speak for you guys, but I, I was actually not too upset with the seedings and, and the regions. I think very favorable matchups for, for us. So definitely looking forward to it. I don't have a whole lot of questions other than – that kind of stuff. Awesome. We're pumped that you're able to hop on the podcast as a plate. We, you know, we're trying to get behind the Austin Ash train. I don't think enough people are recognizing it. Hence, that's why we created a video. I think if people are loving that, that kind of that lit was off. Sweet. That was sweet. <laughs> and just for in, just for uh, instance, if anybody's wondering, we didn't we didn't want Jabo on the podcast. We wanted Austin Ash. Uh, so if Jabo says that we were asking him to come on the podcast, that's a lie. He's uh, he's making things up. So we're pumped that you're to hop on. And if there's anything we can do, if we need to send you a care package over there in the NCAA tournament while you're locked in the bubble, you just let us know if we need to shout you out. We're here for you, my man. All right. I'll let you guys know. I appreciate you guys. All right. Hey, take care and good luck. All right. We'll see you guys. Yeah, Austin. About him. And I, it seems like you've been following for a long time, but he was, he's a really nice kid. Yeah, dude. I mean, the man's always been a complete sniper. His form may be questionable by some people, but to me, as long as the ball goes through the hoop, that's all that matters to me. And that's what he's continued on as his minimum minimums coming in off the Iowa's bench.
So I'm pumped to watch them and the, the Hawkeyes uh, here in the NCAA tournament. In a little bit here, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about the sports and the NCAA tournament and what we think about Iowa. But first, Bryce, did you know that March is Iowa History Month? I did not know that. Okay, with that being said, Bryce, I'm going to refresh your memory. We all went through a little Iowa history. I got a few questions on here. I think you should rattle right through these guys, uh, see if you can uh, put Iowa on uh, I mean, the state of Iowa back on the map with some of these facts. All right, Bryce, first question. How many counties are there in Iowa? 99. What is the largest? Kasuth. What is the state bird? Goldfinch. State rock. Ooh. Geode. Yep. All right. State flower. Uh, I want to say it's not the sunflower. Although those have been like really popular lately. Um, I'm going to say, dude, I know like six flowers. Do you want me to give you a hint? Yeah. There's a casino named after it. The rose. The wild rose. Okay. All right, Bryce, I'm going to go ahead and count that as a uh, uh, correct answer for you right there. We're, this goes into our final question. What year did Iowa officially become a state? 1856. Ten years off. Oh, 1846. 1846, correct. Not bad, Bryce. Not bad. Uh, I feel like most of those fifth graders would dominate those questions. Maybe. Yeah, they would. March is officially the state of Iowa history month. So (laughs) I'm not sure where I found that. We'll have to go back and recheck on that. But good job on that. Bryce, we had a little winter storm. Uh, I know Cedar Falls was underneath a little. We had a blizzard. It was pretty nasty here the other day. What did Des Moines get hit with? We got nothing. So I've seen that. I always saw that. So I'm from southern south central iowa and i always saw that you know we had very different weather than northern iowa especially when i was going to you and i it was always different than pella and des moines we have had that all year i feel like where we'll get hit by something and then you guys won't get touched and then this last storm we didn't get anything so kind of happy about that we have a little bit of like that jury rain slash yeah we've only had rain i think like the late night rain uh with 45 degrees not so bad actually to your Loving typical it. Iowa spring right there. You know, yeah. Iowa always wants to hit you if that one last winter storm, right? When, you know, because recently weeks we had what two straight weeks of uh, 55 plus degrees. So you almost had that false hope that, hey, spring's officially here. And then Iowa hits you with that late winter storm, which could be a good sign. Usually it happens back in uh, late in April or early yeah. first week of April or late March. Hopefully this is a good sign that uh, winter is fish- officially over if the last little surge I had there. But no, we had a we probably got about five, six inches. And at one point, I, it was the worst winter storm I've seen all year in the morning. Really? It was nasty. Yeah, it was bad. It was bad. I mean, very minimum traffic on the road. Plows couldn't even keep up. But after when 12, 1 o'clock hit, everything just kind of melted away. And that was kind of it. It's one of those weird winters where it'll be nice. And I felt like we had like a lot of nice winter. And then it was really bad. So when it was like snowing, it was really snowing. When it was cold, it was really cold. It was not very moderate. And then all of a sudden, like we get a super nice spell in february and now it's like you know we have the little dip again you know false spring goes into uh second winter um but yeah i'm I'm excited are you i don't think we'll be able to do anything outside for st patty's tomorrow um or today when it releases but um we're gonna we're gonna try and do a little patio action i think uh this time no this day last year governor reynolds announces that spas spas bars restaurants so on will be closed for uh unofficial amount of time what how much has changed in the year do you remember that no when much. she announced what was what was going through your mind when she announced that hey this shit's closing and you're like oh shit this shit's real yeah it was scary so we right before we left the country we the nba shuts down so it's like march 11 or 12 and then we fly out and for the first three days of the trip, it felt very normal. And then you started to see things really clear out, which was very, very eerie. So you just see like this entire campus basically of people uh, slowly diminishing and like you're kind of the only people left and you hear the news going on. You're, so it's very unsettling, especially when you're not in your home base. Um, and and sorry, you were in get, Dominican, right? Right. right. Yeah. And uh, when we got back, customs was completely empty. So that was like unheard of we literally went to the front of customs which can be up to like an hour or two getting back into the country um we get back home feel good feel better 
uh, and then things shut down like a day later. So, you know, spent a few days in quarantine and then went back to Cedar Falls, like maybe a week later. And it just was such a weird time. I felt like where you didn't really know what was going, you didn't know how severe the illness was. You didn't want to catch it. You were nervous about that. You were kind of bummed that everything was shut down. Um, it just was, it was such a, like an uncertain, weird, um, you heard that word unprecedented, like too many times throughout the last year. And then, you know, th slowly throughout the summer, throughout the fall, throughout the winter, you know, you start to get a better grasp, but more data on how much the sickness is really going to affect people, like where we're going to really be sitting. If we take the proper preca precautions, we'll probably be okay. And so to answer your question in a very long way, it's crazy what has happened in a year. Right. Like I mean, we, I it, we were so scared and now we're like, we're on the, we're fine. We're going to be okay. Yeah, yeah, especially with the vaccine coming out, it's giving a lot of people more hope. Uh, the biggest thing that hit me last year was the NCAA tournament being canceled, to be honest. When that hit oh, me, that like, sucks. Er everything, I mean, just terrible timing. I mean, I couldn't have hit after the tournament. But that being said, I've never taken something for so much granted in my entire life, uh, not just the NCAA tournament, but just, like, seeing people, you know, socializing with people, being out in bars, being able to go to a restaurant, sit down, and just being within a community. So it's good to have some of that kind of back. Mm -hmm. as we p continue to progress forward but that's leading right into our next subject you know hey we're here the nca tournament is here bryce how psyched are you for this year's nca tournament man i what? mean having a year off and now we're, here we are we're back it, it it is way more hype for sure for sure because of last year last week i was like i was hyped up i was actually a little nervous for the big 10 tournament in iowa uh, playing well um they ended up doing like decent i mean they lost to the the champions and like going into this week i'm beyond excited i love march madness i think it's the most exciting time for general sports fans the best time for b basketball fans um and obviously for sports better it's a great time to win or lose some money right right and we have, yep yep I'm, I'm in a few brackets right now um uh, five out not much in but uh oh do you see i don't know if you know this uh fan duel has a ba basically a no-brainer the, the 50 okay. dollar michigan state it's up to 69 dollars okay so I don't know if you hop on that. I'm going to hop on that today, though. So that's you can bet the $50. So it's basically just automatically win 50 bucks there. Um, I probably won't be betting as much. You know, I'm just going to sit back and I'm, I'm going to enjoy cheer for some upsets. Uh, I think there's going to be a lot of upsets this year. Uh, I'm looking off for Winthrow 23 and one Winthrow. If it's a 12 seed playing at number five, I can't remember who they're playing at the five seed. But I, this year is just going to be so much fun, especially if like min, even like 20 percent attendance it just makes so much such a big difference i yeah. mean you can look back on the big 10 conference and just a little bit of noise sounded like a full arena as austin ash was kind of describing with illinois exactly yeah it's gonna be a great environment i actually didn't know what to choose there were so many teams this year where i had been keeping track more because of sports betting and i had seen a lot of those teams win their conference tournaments or play very well in the conference tournament throughout the year see them you know play big teams well like austin was saying they're ten typically more tenured and uh you know, typically very, very efficient in their conferences. So I had no idea. My two upsets are, I think, Colgate and Cleveland State, my big ones that I, I really think three, a 14 and a 15 seed upsetting this year. Yep, you've been keeping your eye close on uh, Cleveland State this year. So I'm hockey. I'm happy the Hawks didn't draw them at the 15 seed. Uh, the Hawks land a two seed as uh, predicted, and they will be playing Grand Canyon State University. Uh, a team notable with size, which kind of hurts Iowa in a way with Jack Nunji being out this year. Yeah, so that hurts. how do you feel about this matchup? I think it'll be ugly. I think any team that has size that can give a hard time to Garza, it disrupts the flow. And what I've noticed is the, the biggest times that we struggle are when we're getting quality guard pressure and, and tough post play down low against Garza. So I think it'll be ugly. I think we will win. I've um, I've had a little bit of time to sit back and watch some Grand Canyon State's um, highlights. I mostly just watched their conference championship highlights. Uh, their their bigs, their big men can shoot it. They both shoot from outside the kind of year old bigs. Uh, they have quick little guards that can either be a pro or a con to us. Uh, so I believe they're going to give us some early ball pressure. But at, over the end, I don't think there's anybody that can match up with Wieskamp. I think Wieskamp is going to be the deciding factor. Uh, that must have a guy six two guard guarding him, and we can't was as we can't been shooting the last you know a couple weeks stretch. I think he should have a big game for us, and hopefully, uh, Garza can eventually get away down low. But the key here is staying out of foul trouble. 
You know, you don't want to get into the NCAA tournament and just get fall trouble because we just don't have the depth right now at the big man spot to come in and uh, replace Luca Garza. Uh, so hopefully, it's just they've kind of let the play on play on in the NCAA tournament. But Grand Canyon State is not a team to be overlooking. Uh, so that should be a good key matchup. But tomorrow, uh, uh, this will be released on Thursday. So I mean Wednesday. So actually tomorrow Thursday will be uh, Drake's matchup. They'll be one of the first two games of the NCAA tournament with uh, 11 to seed play versus Wichita State, which mm-hmm. I think is a terrific matchup. It's Drake's really uh, best player, Tank Hethel, has been out for the last month, two months or so, is coming back, rejoining the Rock, uh, the Drake Bulldogs. So I'm pumped for this game. I think that's my favorite game in the NCAA tournament so far. I, I would agree. I think Michigan State UCLA is going to be good, but I watched Wichita State. I've seen Duke or uh, Drake play quite a bit this year. They remind me a lot of each other. They're very athletic. They can shoot the ball. Um, the one thing that I noticed about Wichita State was that they're very willing to take bad shots. Um, I think Drake does a much better job of uh, getting the great the great look and then taking the difficult shot if it comes to that at the end of the shot clock. I did not see that from Wichita State. A lot of solo action. I think Drake plays better as a team. So I'm I'm thinking that Drake can uh, – I think they're a little bit of an underdog here. I think they can do the upset. Um, but it's it's going to be really good, especially I, – I, I hope Hempel's not rusty. What do you think that'll be like? I think he's going to be either super rusty or he's just going to come in at the flow like, hey, I've had these last two months off. It's time to ball, bro. Let's go. Mm-hmm. And he comes in and uh, just goes off. Um, I think Drake beats Wichita State, and I think they play UC USC very well. I think that'll be a close game. I do think they'll itch it over USC, but if that happens, they'll likely run in the Kansas. Um, you know, there's no really ceiling for this Drake Bulldog team in the first couple of games in the NCAA tournament. Like I said, no. anyone can be anyone, and they're just a fun team. That's they got something to prove this year. You know, like oh, you guys haven't played any teams this year, but they've been able to win, and they've been able to win with less with the amount of injuries that they've been dealing with. Right. And you say that and it's like, it's true, but later in the season, they got to play Loyola Chicago and they had a tough first game in their back-to-back matchup. And then they played very, very well in the second game. And I don't think that they were at full strength. So, I mean, I have the Bulldogs upsetting for a couple rounds. I same here. I got them headed on to the sweet 16 uh, cool. versus the Hawks. So yeah, I mean, that'll, that'll be quite the day of Iowa history. Probably one of the biggest the biggest game in Iowa state of Iowa history. If the two programs matched up against each other, I know everyone's been wanting to see that all season, you know, Drake's gonna be ready. Oh, they're always ready with the fire. They're always fired up to play against an Iowa, Iowa state team. And, uh, and that would just be, I mean, like I think this year they have the size and depth and the quickness just uh match up of who they're playing against. Hopefully they can stay healthy along with Iowa as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's the trouble I always face when I'm filling out the bracket, I get emotional and don't always go with the team that I think is going to win. Yeah. I choose. <laughs> Too many Big Ten teams, too many Iowa teams. Yep. Well, I'm I'm excited to uh, watch this weekend. I'm going to head over to the your guys' place in the morning. We're going to watch yeah. this uh, big watch party. I'm pumped up for that. Uh, what should I be looking forward to this watch party? Uh, you know what? I think the C.J. Frederick jersey is going to come out. Um, I think we're going to get uh, some lawn chairs. We'll probably have a little uh, assortment of finger foods uh, and, and plenty of booze. Cool, cool. Well, I'll, I think I'm going to come Thursday, actually, and uh, watch cool. the Drake game with you guys as well. So I'll be chilling around with you guys for a little bit here. So I'm excited. Looking forward to that. And I can't wait to recap the first weekend of NSA March Madness here uh, next Tuesday. Uh, Fran McCaffrey contract extension to that. 2018. Did you see that? Yeah, I'm, I think that's well-deserved. Yep. After the I, last, I think we mentioned it with um, maybe Peter a few months ago, but – for what five years now he's just been on a solid rebuild uh better and better best team in 34 years is that what i'm hearing yeah uh i can't remember, maybe 1986 or something like that is the highest seeding i can't yeah. remember the exact date but yeah uh so credit credit the fan especially in, in a year of the big 10 where the everyone's the best the big Ten's probably ever been mm-hmm. you know we're the best we're the in the last like i can't remember i can't remember this is exact stat but there's something about the nine plus teams in the NCAA tournament that it's done only five other times in the NCAA history and this is one of the years the Big Ten has produced that so credit to Fran credit to the Hawks with through batting through Fran uh February ending on a win at least getting a win in the quarterfinals of the Big Ten run into the ultimate champs of the Big Ten tournament Illinois Illini uh I mean that's good to see uh the Iowa women fell in the Big Ten championship to a stacked Maryland team uh, you know, Caitlin Clark's been doing everything she can as a freshman. Uh, the Hawks, they land a five seed in the big t- and, uh, NCAA tournament for the woman. 
Yeah, I saw that. I saw Caitlin played uh, very well every game. Been following her uh, throughout the year. So impressive. And um, you know, I don't, I don't think she got the credit she deserved in the National uh, Women's Player of the Year voting. Um, a lot of the, a lot of the honors, I think, kind of got overlooked. Uh, I know that that's just a maybe a little bias towards like you know teams like Tennessee and UConn and a, some of those dominant dynasty programs, but um, look for a lot of good things coming from that team. Uh, Caitlin Clark is the exact player that you want to watch in the NCAA March Madness. Uh, she's just the type of player that will shoot from half court, which everybody loves to see in the NCAA, especially let alone the tournament. So I'm looking forward to that, and I'm just looking forward to a great weekend, Bryce. Let's go. Oh, I'm pumped. Uh, do we miss anything? I know we've gotten a few comments about uh, too many sports related conversations. Well, guess what? Like that's kind of what yep. we do. Yep, we'll get used to it this weekend, especially the next couple of weeks at the NCAA. It's going to be hard not to. This is literally like, I know this is one of your favorite weekends. It's definitely like, as far as sporting events, it's it's my favorite. So yep. we got we to gotta talk a little bit about March Madness next week. All right, folks. Well, yeah. hey, let's have a week and we'll be talking next week and recapping the NCAA tournament. Go Hawks and go Drake Bulldogs. Let's go. See ya.